Okay, so now let's go ahead and start building the PHP for processing this form data. And I'm going to go ahead and pass all of this data along with um, which button was pressed into a, a single function. So I need to know whether the login button was pressed or the register button was pressed. So login pressed is get post value login button value and register pressed is get post value register button pressed register button value rather and then I'm going to return an error message from this function. So login or register. And I have a long parameter list. So the way that you're supposed to write a long parameter list is like so. So login button pressed, register button pressed, and then login username login password, register username, register password, and register confirm password. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that so I don't make any mistakes. And then I'm going to go into my login code, which I don't have yet, so I need login code. And let me make sure I require that login code. And I'm going to create a new function, login or register. Like so. And let's start with the pressed values. So if not empty login pressed, then I'm going to call login and pass in login username and login password. Else if not empty register pressed register register username register password and register confirm password so if neither button was pressed that means I loaded the login form directly and so I'm just going to return an empty string. So the error message will be empty in this case. And then let's start with login. So function login is going to take a login. I don't need to pass login anymore, it's redundant. So just username and password. And let's go ahead and stub register username password and confirm okay so first thing we want to check is if empty username then we want to return an error message and I'm going to create an error message function that's going to take an error header line and an error message. So the header line is going to be error logging in, and the message is going to be actually, let's go ahead and create constants for these because I'm going to reuse them. 
So in login constants, error messages, so e login error logging in e register error registering and then e no username Let's go ahead and add e no password. And e no confirm. And that's enough to start. So we're going to have a login error. And the type of error is no username. And let's just leave it like this for now to test. So function error message is going to take a type and detail and let's look at our error box again so I have an, a div box here but let's go ahead and if this is no error it's just going to be an empty string otherwise we'll have our boxes. So return div ID is error header and then dollar sign type. And then we'll end that div, and we'll have another div ID is error detail. Okay, so this is returning, this is returning, and then login. We need to return whatever this returns. And same thing here. And then if we get here, we're just going to return an empty string for no error. And let's go ahead and do that here as well. Okay. And then let's test it and then we'll style it. So if I don't specify a username, error logging in username must be supplied. If I do specify a username, I get no error message. So that's good. So let's go ahead and style the error header and error detail. So in CSS, let's go ahead and say error header. I'm going to make this text align center and color red and font weight bold and let's go ahead and make the or box bold as well And then we want this one to be a little bigger and the error detail to be a little smaller. But we're going to center both of them. So 
So let's make this let's take a look at what we have right now. So let's try 2m for that, and we'll try one point. Let's try this is 1.5 right here. Let's try 1.5 here as well. And as long as I'm here, I am going to make that button bigger. So input type is submit. Let's add font size 1.25m. And let's go ahead and add some padding around that thing. So ten pixels. See if that makes any difference. That's a little big. Let's just go one M. So we'll make uh, this be one M. Probably get rid of that entirely. And then we also want to make sure this doesn't get too wide. So I don't think this is a little, I don't think this part should be bold. And I want to make both of these boxes be a maximum of this form is 450, so maybe make it a maximum of 600. So width colon 600 pixels. And let's get rid of the bold on the detail. Oh, and now we need to margin auto this thing. Zero auto. For both of these. Okay, and then we need some space here. So let's go ahead and add a margin bottom. Twenty pixels. That register button's a little big still, but I think it's okay. So let's go ahead and continue checking. So if we don't have a username, if we don't have a password, and then I'm going to repeat those errors for register. So this is going to be e register. And same thing here. And we're also going to break that line. And we're also going to check that they've supplied confirmation. So that's e no confirm. So let's supply a username but no password. And then let's try no username here. Username must be supplied error registering. That's three, I think. And then let's try without a password. Password must be supplied. And then let's try it without a confirmation. Password confirmation must be supplied. So that got wrapped. I guess it looks okay. So now, if they have supplied username, password, and confirmation, let's throw an error if the confirmation doesn't match the password. Mm. 
password and confirmation must match. So if password not equal equal confirm return error message e register e confirm mismatch. Okay, so if we get here, we have a username and password. If we get here, we have username, password, and confirm and password match. Let's just try that last one. Some random value, password and confirmation must match. <laughs>